Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to use Euler diagrams to determine whether an argument is valid or not. There's a lot to unpack in just the description of what we're doing in this video alone, so let's talk about what these things are. First, a logical argument. A logical argument is made up of a set of premises and a conclusion. So we have this and this and this, therefore, whatever. So the, the things leading up to the conclusion would be the premises, and then after the therefore would be the conclusion. An argument is valid if the fact that all premises force the conclusion to be true. So if we end up with all trues for our conclusion, then we would say that the argument is valid. An argument that is not valid is invalid or a fallacy. So you can use those words interchangeably. And a val valid argument does not indicate that the conclusion is true. So truth does not equal validity. It's a very important thing. So truth does not equal validity. So in terms of logic, we can have something that logically is valid, and we can have something that is true, and they don't necessarily have to be go hand in hand. A little bit, a little bit about, so I said we were using Euler diagrams. Well, what is Euler? Euler is named after Leonard Euler. He's one of the greatest mathematicians to have ever lived. He was alive in the 18th century. His ideas led to an entire branch of mathematics called graph theory, and then later topology. We immortalize him in mathematics through the irrational base E. So if you're familiar with uh, the natural base E, it's a very rare irrational number because normally irrational numbers either have like a symbol involved, like the square root of two, or they're a Greek letter. But this is a rare one because it's actually a, a standard English letter, the letter E, and it's the natural base named after Euler. Okay, let's talk about what Euler diagrams are because knowing who he is doesn't actually help us with the Euler diagrams. So what are Euler, Euler diagrams? It's a technique that can be used to determine whether an argument is valid or not. We verify the validity of an argument graphically by drawing overlapping shapes. Usually we use circles or ovals. This might kind of sound like Venn diagrams. That's pretty much what it is. And they represent the regions or sets in the argument. So again, sounds a lot like Venn diagrams and that's because it, it is. Of course, the premises do not necessarily have to be true to find a logical conclusion. However, for our sake, we will assume that from here on, all the premises are factual. So whether they are or not, we're just going to pretend like they are, or we're just not going to care whether they're factual or not. Okay, so in the premises, we're going to be given sets of things, and we are going to represent those using circles or ovals. To start, let's look at arguments with universal quantifiers. So recall that the universal quantifiers, that's all or every, or on the other side of the spectrum, no or none. A premise containing the all or every quantifier, such as all P or Q, means that there would be a big set Q with a subset P inside, right? So if all P are Q, here's my set Q, all P are within set Q. So we would look something like that. So P would be a subset of Q. A premise containing the no or none quantifier, such as no R is S, indicates two non-overlapping sets. So we would have our R set over here and our S set over here, right? We don't need any overlap for them because it says that none of them are the other one. We can check whether an argument is valid using truth tables or Euler diagrams. We're going to be using Euler diagrams in this video, otherwise that would be a really silly thing for me to do, is to say we're going to use them and then do something else. So we're going to use our Euler diagrams. And what we do is we're going to be given this information with our universal quantifiers. We have to figure out where the piece of information belongs. Does it belong out here based on what it says? Does it belong here or does it belong in here? And that's what we have to decide based on the premises and the conclusions. Let's look at an example and we'll talk through it as we go. First example, is the following argument valid? So here are the two premises. We kind of set this up this way. So we've premise one here, premise two here. Then we have like an equals bar, like we see, you know, for adding two numbers in a vertical column. And then this is our conclusion. So premise one says all students in this class will get an A. So all students in this class will get an A. Okay, so we're going to set up that particular sentence using Euler diagrams. So we're going to have one set for students who get A's. Students with A's. And then it says all students in this class get an A. So that would be inside here would be students in this class. Students in class. Okay, so that's how we would kind of set up our first premise. Now, the second premise tells us something 
about a specific person. Andrea is in this class. So Andrea is in this class. So Andrea is going to be in here. I'm going to use an A, although usually we use an X to represent that second premise, but whatever, we're going to use an A because that's what Andrea starts with. And then our conclusion is that Andrea will get an A in this class. So do we agree with that or not? Well, is Andrea within the students with A's universe? Yes, she is. So we would say this is a valid argument, right? Because she lies within this outer circle here. So this is a valid argument. So yay for Andrea. Yay, it's a valid argument. Okay, another example. All maple trees have leaves. So here we have our set of things with leaves. And then here we have maple trees, right? Because all maple trees have leaves. Okay, so that's our first premise, breaking down our first premise, turning it into an Euler diagram. Our second premise says that tree has leaves. Now, the thing about that tree is that it's somewhere in the leaves set. It could be here, but it also could be here. We don't know, we don't have any more information about it. So is it valid to say, to conclude, that that tree is a maple tree? Well, no, because maybe it is, it could be, but it could be something else that has leaves on it. Maybe it's an oak tree or something else. So because we can't decide, we can't for sure say that that tree is a maple tree, we don't get to make that conclusion. This argument is, let's put the in in front of there, invalid. This is an invalid argument, no good, not enough information. How about this one, example three? And if you're a parent, you understand where I'm coming from here. No parent is wrong ever. So this is no, no parent, and it's saying something they're not. So we're gonna have people who are wrong. I'm gonna say wrong people just because that's shorter. We have wrong people, and then we have parents over here. Okay, so that's our first premise, breaking that one down. Premise two, Suki is wrong. So Suki's gonna go right here in the wrong people category. Then is it fair to conclude, therefore, Suki is not a parent? Suki's over here, nowhere near the parent set. So yes, this is a valid argument. One more example with our universal qualifier quantifiers. Okay, snakes are not mammals. Okay, so we're going to put our snakes over here. And we're going to put our mammals over here. Jesse is not a mammal. Okay, so Jesse does not go in the mammal category, but Jesse could be out here or Jesse could be in here, right? Not a mammal, but Jesse could be a snake or Jesse could be neither a mammal nor a snake. Therefore, Jesse is a snake. Can we for sure make that conclusion? Is that a valid conclusion to make? No, because, right, we could put maybe because snakes aren't mammals either, but maybe Jesse is something else. So because we have two potential places that Jesse could lie in our Euler diagram, this argument is invalid. Invalid argument. Okay, so those were the universal quantifiers. Now let's review uh, our existential quantifiers. Recall that existential quantifiers are some do, some do not. A premise containing some P do, or many P do, will have two overlapping circles. So we would have one representing P, and then we would have one representing whatever they do, which we'll use Q for that. So if many of them do, there is going to be some overlap, but there's potentially also some P who do not too. So we would have to have it just kind of like a regular Venn diagram. A premise rarely, if ever, contains some people do not or something weird like that. We usually don't see the, the negative existential quantifiers here. Usually it's just many blah do blah. We can check whether an argument is valid using truth tables or Euler diagrams. So let's check our existential quantifiers now. Many students, many BMCC students are sophomores. Okay, so we need two sets here. We have BMCC students and sophomores. It says many are. So we're going to set up two overlapping circles. This is going to be BMCC students, and this is going to be our set of sophomores. And we know that there are some who are not. So we can, we can fairly say that, yeah, this is, this is going to be true. There's going to be some overlap, but there's going to be some not overlap as well. Then it says, I am a BMCC student. Okay. So can we conclude, therefore, I am a sophomore? Is that what this is saying? Well, I'm a BMCC student, so I could be here or I could be here, which means I could be a sophomore, but I'm not necessarily a sophomore. So is this argument valid? No, because we have discrepancies here in our Euler diagram. So we would say this is an invalid argument. 
And our last example, many people like ice cream. Okay, so we're gonna set this up. We're gonna have people. And this is gonna be those who like ice cream. So I'm gonna say like ice cream. Nance likes ice cream. Okay, so Nance, so are, can we conclude that Nance is a person? Well, Nance could be over here or Nance could be here. Because we're not 100% sure, maybe Nance is a penguin because I'm pretty sure penguins like ice cream too. I know dogs do, at least my dog does. So I'm not sure I can conclude, I don't feel confident. I don't think this is an argu a valid argument because we're not sure based on the information we're given whether Nance is a person or not, this argument is invalid. This has been an introduction to Euler diagrams. Thank you for stopping by.